watch and burn. Hey everyone. So tonight I want to discuss, um, it's funny because on one hand it is well known, but on the flip side of that coin, it's not the best known documentary. And that is Steve James's Stevie. Now this was released, I believe, I think it was 2001, 2002. It tells the story of Steve James, who is the documentarian who is best known, well now for Stevie as well, but he was, he's also best known for uh, Hoop Dreams. And what this tells the story of is Steve James, the director, attempting to reconnect with Stephen Dale Fielding, who was his little brother when he was doing the Big Brother program, I believe back when he was in college. His girlfriend at the time, who would later become his wife, Judy, was the one that suggested that perhaps he should do this. And through her suggestion, he meets Stevie. Now, Stevie came from an incredibly abusive and neglectful household. His mom, Bernice, she, she wasn't wild about Stevie because uh, Stevie's father was married when he was conceived and she didn't know this. So according to Stevie's sister, Brenda, she took this out on Stevie. Like he couldn't, I believe the quote is, he couldn't look to his left without getting hit. And um, according to his grandmother, uh, Verna, who's a fucking nightmare, who hates Bernice, Bernice once beat him so bad that he lost his speech. He lost the ability to speak. And so needless to say, the subject matter of this documentary isn't exactly the most inviting or friendly. I will say the subjects of this documentary though, their, their openness and their honesty and their willingness to participate with Steve James while he's attempting to do this so that he can reconnect with Stevie, that's the thing that sort of causes this documentary to soar because like I said, because of their openness and because of their ability to just sort of go deep with their trauma very quickly. Um, everybody in the, everybody profiled in this movie other than Verna, I felt for. I didn't love his grandmother Verna because she got off too much on trying to make Bernice, his mom's life, a living hell. And she just took too much pleasure in it. And I can understand that, you know, if you're looking to stand up for the kid who, who you know, somebody beat until they, they lost their ability to speak. And I can understand you taking issue with that individual, but for Verna, it seemed to be more of a personal thing. Like she got a kick out of fucking with Bernice. I think even had Bernice not had Stevie, Verna still would have hated Bernice because Bernice married Verna's son and she didn't feel that she was good enough for him. So I think she would have made Bernice's life a living hell no matter what. But then when you toss Stevie into the mix, see, Stevie was caught right in the middle. On one hand, he, had, he was trying to please Verna, who had helped to raise him because Bernice had pretty much given him up and that was it. And so Verna was the one who did the lion's share of the raising, well, next to the state, of course. And so he's trying to please Verna, but then Bernice, He's trying to please her too because she's his mom and they're both at him saying how the other one's a piece of shit. So when he's at home with Bernice before she, she ended up giving him up to state care, she would be bashing Verna. And then when he'd be over at Verna's because Bernice would need a break because Stevie had a number of uh, behavioral issues. He, would, he was incredibly hyper and he was hard to control. So she'd toss him off to Verna. And while he was at Verna's, Verna would be like, your mom's a piece of shit. Look, she's dropping you here. And so Stevie, there's this rift caused inside of him where he, he can't, you can't please both. I mean, and you know he feels responsible for the rift as well. And this is pointed out throughout the course of the film. So you couple this sort of emotional distress with the physical abuse and you have a powder keg for somebody who inevitably grows up to molest a child. And that is exactly what happens in this movie. He attempts to molest his, uh, I think it's his cousin. It's Bernice's sister's daughter or his niece rather, sorry. And it's like, there's so many victims in this movie. Like I don't feel, I'm not angry at Stevie because he attempted to molest his, I believe it was his niece or the little girl I'll say, because I'm just not sure anymore. 
And yet I feel completely sorry for her because she's a complete victim as well. I mean, what the hell did the kid do to anybody? And it's like, but of course Stevie was going to grow up to molest children as it's pointed out again in the film that um, because of he's so emotionally stunted because of the physical and sexual abuse that he ended up suffering at one of the group homes that he was uh, placed in, coupled with the emotional abuse that he suffered as the result of trying to please both his mom and his grandmother, it's going to stunt his emotional development to the point where he could see children as being his emotional peers. So he's uh, going to attempt to do something with them. And that's exactly what happens. And the whole time Steve James is attempting to be sort of like a big brother again, but by this point, Stevie's lost. He's an adult. He's been in and out of prison a bunch of times. He, he can't hold a job. He's always injured. He's, he, he's fucked. And there's, there's nowhere for a guy like Stevie to get help because he's just so headstrong. Like Stevie's one of those guys that like, if you make the mistake of saying like anything tough about them, that'll be it. Like if you're like, wow, Stevie, you really lifted that or whatever. You're really strong. He'd be like, yeah, I am strong. I can fuck anybody up, yo. And it's like, because of that sort of dogged need to be cool because of the amount of the, the heaping amount of abuse he suffered, he seems to make bad decision after bad decision, you know? And in regards to his court case, where at first, when he had a female representing him, she had his statement that he willingly gave to the police, the police, sorry, suppressed. But then his sexism gets him to believe, gets him to believe. His sexism gets the better of him, and he feels that a woman wouldn't be able to avidly represent him, so he gets a dude lawyer who doesn't really do a lot, and Stevie ends up going to prison for 10 years. And nobody, Steve James included, helps Stevie. They see him mishandling his case so grossly throughout the course of the documentary, and yet nobody really attempts to intervene and say, Stevie, buddy, come on, what's a little therapy, you know? The first deal the state offered was therapy and time served. But Stevie said no to therapy because he thinks he's smarter than therapy or whatever. And nobody attempts to sort of coach him into accepting this plea deal. And before long, he's in prison for a decade. And I think that's where Stevie needed to go. Everybody knew that he wasn't, maybe he was going to learn, maybe he wasn't going to learn, but he needed to be punished for what he did. And I really believe that that's why everybody who could have done more for him, legally speaking, didn't once throughout the course of this movie. I think too, this movie's had some really poignant moments for me as well. I remember uh, when he was going fishing with his buddy and his buddy says the line that you can get lost down here so easy. I found that to be incredibly affecting because it's true. It seems like in areas like where they are, it's like Southern Illinois. It's like you, you can get lost back there. There's no work, there's no hope, there's no fun, there's no money. And you can just disappear into the woodwork, the mess that is that place. And I don't know, this movie's always really hit me hard because I've watched it at this point. I don't know, I, I hundreds of times because I just, I fell in love with the rhythm and I, I fell in love with uh, how genuine it feels and how honest this is and how there's no real favorites being played. And despite the absolutely unforgivable and abhorrent thing that Stevie does fairly early on in this movie, I don't hate him. And I don't think anybody does. And I don't think anybody should. I mean, as I understand it, Stephen Dale Fielding, last I heard, was now homeless somewhere on the streets of Tennessee. Specifically, it was Tennessee that I read. And of course, Bernice, she's passed on. And uh, Verna, she's long since passed on. And... That's it. I don't know what happened. I would love to find out what happened to his girlfriend, Tanya, Tanya Gregory. I wish Steve James would just give us an update. Anything, just 30 seconds, something to say, like anything. I don't care what it is. Say Brenda moved. Say, you know, fucking Stevie's not in Tennessee. Now he's homeless and wherever. I don't know. Like just, I just want something new because this movie ends with him in prison, falling in love with the works of William Shakespeare. And that's it. That's all we get. And I know I'm not the only person that cares about this because I've checked this out on YouTube before and I've seen a lot of people are really hungry for more information regarding the, the, the subjects portrayed throughout the course of this documentary. 
And I just wish Steve James would do that. I wish there was something to know, quite frankly. But yeah, so look, I am going to go. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for fucking almost 10 minutes while I discussed a really impactful and uh, an emotional powerhouse of a documentary. And that, again, is Steve James's Stevie. If you liked this review, if you know what Stevie is, and you do something nice for somebody. And, and don't forget that you guys are amazing. And fuck, man, I just want to know what's going on with Stevie. I don't think it's asking too much. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.